in an attempt to discover and determine why we are at this place in history, I looked up why guns were invented. And the first thing from, it was actually the History Channel website, talked about how the American Revolution was one with gun power, but that gunpowder, <laughs> different from gun power, um, and I'm not trying to make light of it, but by having that type of intonation in my voice, this is a very, very serious subject. I'm sorry, my little light thing is, is moving around my holder. I guess my hand is steadier than, than this device. Gunpowder was invented around 850 AD in China while researchers were trying to develop an elixir for life. The irony of that, to me, is not lost on the actuality of what guns have the power to do. And regardless of any political sentiments or feelings about banning guns, the reality is, is that the technology is already here. So for me, it would be analogous to us saying that iPhones are illegal. So now everyone has to go and put their iPhones into a facility where we're going to melt them down. The same with illegal drugs. People still get access to drugs, even though they are illegal. During Prohibition, an entire industry was built around manufacturing and providing liquor to individuals. And alcohol is very dangerous. The thing with guns is that in the wrong hands, they are lethal. And sadly, unless we were to eliminate them entirely from planet Earth, we are going to continue to have issues with abuse, just like people abuse drugs and people crash cars and people dr drink too much and they abuse drugs. I think I already just said that, I'm sorry. This has just been a very upsetting week for all of us, especially if you are a parent of children that attend a vulnerable school. My children are the same ages as the victims. They're nine and 11 and they go to a public school and there are no security measures that are anywhere comparable, comparable to that of private schools. The, the Los Angeles Unified School District barely has enough money to provide supplies to the classrooms. We donate paper and we have booster clubs and have events for creating additional funds for the children at schools. And, and it's, it's confusing because property taxes in Los Angeles, there's a percentage from each property tax bill that goes to Los Angeles School District. So it's allocated across the board to different sections. And I, I'm not familiar with the budget, but until we are able to deal with the mental health aspect of why people do what they do, especially with regards to guns, gun violence, then we must put effort into securing 
these schools for the children and teachers. And of course, a shooting could happen anywhere. A bombing could happen anywhere. Guns are not the only weapons that can hurt people, but their ability to kill quickly, especially assault rifles, and violently beyond repair. I mean, the fact that the parents had to, to release DNA samples in order to determine who their children were. I mean, you, you hear the reports of the trauma doctors who tell us what these assault rifles do to human bodies. And the reality is, is that it doesn't make sense for any private citizen to need an assault rifle. But if someone is of clear mind and has good intentions, I don't want to stop them from their beliefs. I don't want to stop them from what they think they need in order to feel good about their themselves and be able to sleep at night. But at the end of the day, none of those parents were even able to go in and try to save their children because the police who were armed were stopping them. And if one of those parents had had a gun, I mean, it's legal to, to carry around a gun on you in, in Texas. I don't know if you have to have a carry license and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with all, all of the policies, but let's say that one of them did and he or she wanted to go in, the cops would have stopped the parents. And if a parent had pulled out a gun, the cops may have felt the need to shoot the parent. So this particular story we have to learn more because it doesn't make sense why trained law enforcement who have access to weapons were not using them within the time frame that they had to try to abate the violence and the killings. And within that time frame, specialists, military specialists could have been airlifted in so there, there's a disconnect in the line, lines of communication, and I don't know who that falls on. I don't know if that's the mayor, the chief of, chief of police, the sheriff, the, the governor, but going straight to talking about taking away guns just creates another story that takes the focus away from the fact that people's lives were lost untimely. I mean, there, there, there is no good time to die. But the reality is that we are all mortal and we will all leave our physical body eventually. But these measures that can be instilled and applied to deter such future incidents from happening need to happen now. Not in the future. And that is something that can be done by executive order or can be done by private citizens donating to having schools reinforced, their, their chain link fences turned into actual walls, providing security cameras, private companies could donate, and then parents potentially could donate to, to being able to pay guards or People could be hired from the actual military or law enforcement services, just like they are on a movie set. You hire police, um, retired police officers. This is really important. This is our future. In this capitalist society, our baseball players earn upwards of $30 million a year for being able to bring people into the stadiums. And in order to get into those stadiums, we have to go through metal detectors. But we're not protecting the future generations. Of that, those 19 children that were brutally murdered 
One of them could have become a leader, a political leader. One of them could have become a baseball player, but they never will have that opportunity because we place value on superficiality instead of human life. And until we start to change our priorities in this country, this will continue to happen. And all of the telltale signs that the killer had during his lifetime were not addressed by the community. A lot of people don't have good families. They come up with difficult situations and their parents are struggling. I mean, the parents are having to work several jobs to make ends meet in this economy of inflation. And then you expect the parent to be able to have the time, patience, and energy to sit down with the child and give the child the emotional connection that the child needs. That is not a real reality for most people, even for people that are wealthy. There, there are people that slip through the cracks in every socioeconomic level, but statistically, people of lower socioeconomic levels are going to bear the grunt of the lack of connection, the lack of understanding, the, they don't feel like they have a future, that they have the ability to make a difference in this world. And it could have taken one person to help this boy. And I have no idea what type of psychological issues he had. Obviously, none of us do. But for him to go through 18 years and to show signs of violent tendencies and behavioral issues and to not have anyone acknowledge it is why this is going to continue to keep happening regardless of gun bans because people can get weapons illegally. And that's why there are arms dealers in the world and why there are drug dealers and people are 3D printing ghost guns. We can't go backwards and take away the technology of gunpowder and guns, but we can put our thinking caps on and band together as a society to help those less fortunate than we might be, because if we're fortunate to be able to comment on this, that means that we have had a very lucky life. And with that, I'm going to stop. Thank you for all of you that watched this through and please feel free to comment and open up a dialogue. Thank you.